I call Maureen Pugh. Thank you, Madam Chair. I stand um, today to speak to the Families Commission Act repeal bill in its, um, in, in its uh, committee stage here today. And I assure you that my contribution will be far less entertaining than the member who just resumed her seat. Um, entertaining and valuable as it was, um, mine will refer back to the bill. Um, and this bill actually does take another, another step uh, further towards the move towards the greater efficiencies and the effectiveness within the, the social investment system. And as we've heard already for, from our great contributors on this side of the House, the social investment agency and the work that they will be doing is transformational for New Zealand and families within New Zealand. And the, um, the repeal of the Families Commission Act of 2003 is what we are here to talk about today. The bill is a very small one, as the Minister has referred to. Um, it is a matter of process and will in effect be repealing the Families Commission Act of 2003, which disestablishes the Families Commission, and that has operated as a superru, the Social Policy Research and Evaluation Unit, which was uh, an autonomous Crown agency. So with the establishment of the Social Investment Board and the Social Investment Agency last year, um, it's made the Family uh, Commission and Superu obsolete, and hence the need for this small piece of legislation to make its way through the House. Part two of the part is the part of the bill that I'd like to focus on um, in my small contribution today, and it is the most substantive part of the bill, and it contains clauses 7 through 12. And I'd like to focus on clause 10, which deals with, um, unlike the other matters which are contained within the, the schedule connected to part one, this clause does not relate to assets or to research, but does in fact relate to staff. And I take, take the opportunity to thank the Superu staff um, and the contractors involved with Superu and the board, uh, Len Cook, the Families Commissioner, uh, Professor Sir Peter Gluckman, a board member, uh, Dame Tiriana Turia, a board <coughs> member, Joanne Wilkinson, a board member, and Hami Paripi, also a board member. And I acknowledge the wealth of expertise they individually and collectively brought to their role. And for all of the hard work that they have contributed over the years of um, existence in that board, and the work that they have done on behalf of New Zealand families. They have laid a foundation, a solid foundation of data and evidence. And we know, um, Madam Chair, in God we trust, but all others must bring data. And these people have worked across the whole of the sector. Thank you, thank you. Oh, was it? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, they have uh, they've promoted informed debate on the key social issues here in New Zealand um, for its families, the whanau, and they've increased the awareness of what works in New Zealand. They've grown the quality, relevance, and the quantity of evidence in some of our most key priority areas. And they've also facilitated the use of evidence by sharing it and using it. Now we know that what can be asserted without evidence can also be dismissed without evidence. So the, the importance of having that research behind us is um, very critical to the decisions that we make and the government makes going forward. There was a part of the submission process that I'd like to refer to, which was from the Children's Commissioner. And he raised the point that he felt that there would be a gap that would appear with the dis disestablishment of the Families Commission. And um, that gap that he mentioned was the allocation of one of, two, of its two roles, um, its two main statutory functions, specifically advocacy. Um, he suggested during his verbal submission that the Children's Commissioner's role could be expanded to include advocacy. So my question for the Minister is, um, could you provide feedback on whether this advocacy role intends to be reallocated, or how she will ensure that the necessary dialogues take place by those various agencies so that the advocacy for our most vulnerable families is not lost? And I think um, that would satisfy the Children's Commissioner. 
um, but also give us assurance that there was not going to be a gap. Thank you. Madam Chair. I call the Honourable Carmel Sepalone. Just uh, to respond to the last two speakers, can I just say, uh, with regards to the advocacy role, there's no interpretation.